Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. This is Josie's Point of View, where we focus on human interest stories from the Carolinas and beyond. Today it's Sunday and it's March the 10th, 2024. Thank you so much for tuning in. If you're new to my channel, I want to thank you so much for stopping by. I hope you find the information here to be informative. And if you're a returning viewer, by all means, thank you for coming back. You know, I always say the tide changes so frequently here on these YouTube streets. So you always have to acknowledge where your support comes from. And I want you to know, I sincerely thank you for your support. Feel free to like and to share this video. And don't forget to subscribe. And our story today takes us to Joint Base Lois McCord, which is located in Tacoma, Washington. Take a look at the headline. And it reads, Army doctor facing 53 counts of sexual misconduct involving male patients. I'll provide you with a summary here. And as always, I'll place links to a few of the full articles in the description box. Our story today is one of the latest sex scandals facing the Army, and it's ugly and it's embarrassing all at the same time. Everybody's talking about it, so I figured I should too. Experts say this is probably the largest scandal of its kind ever in military history. And because of the personal nature of the topic, I'm going to provide you with the facts without drawing any conclusion. So let's get right into it. So our story today centers on activities that took place within this hospital, Madigan Army Medical Center located at Joint Base Lewis McCord. This hospital is one of the largest military healthcare facilities on the West Coast. It's a very beautiful hospital and is one of three designated trauma centers in the Army Medical Department. Now, when I entered the Army, Many moons ago, the base was called Fort Lewis, but as a result of administrative and legislative changes over the past decades or so, there's been a transition and the name has changed to reflect its current affiliation with the Air Force, our sister components, and so now we have Joint Base Lewis McCourt. And the focus of our story is on this military medical officer. 38-year-old Army Major Michael Stockin. Major Stockin was an anesthesiologist working in the pain clinic at Madigan Army Medical Center. And if you're familiar with the life of a soldier, it involves a lot of physical exertion and we have a lot of pain management issues that require treatment. And that was Major Stockin's role as a pain management doctor at the hospital. Dr. Stockton had been an anesthesiologist since 2013, and he had been in that position at Madigan Army Medical Center since July of 2019. Now, over his decade or so military career, he had one tour uh, overseas. He had an assignment to Triple Army Medical Center in Hawaii. I was there too. And he was also at Walter Reed Army Medical Center. I was there as well. Dr. Stockins is now facing a court martial for accusations of sexual misconduct from dozens of patients, and I do mean dozens of patients. Charges of molestation date back to 2019, and it's interesting because he began working in that pain management clinic in July of 2019, and, and so it's possible the allegations existed throughout his time within that clinic. And by the way, officials are saying this remains an open case and there could be many more victims. Now, we don't know the actual number of complaints made against him, but a third party and attorney representing some of the victims have indicated that the number could be as high as 100. 100 complaints. But sometime in February of 2022, he was actually removed from seeing patients in the pain management clinic. He was not charged back then, but he was reassigned to administrative duties while an investigation into those complaints against him were being conducted. And by August of 2022, while that initial investigation was still ongoing, Dr. Stockings was charged with 23 cases of molestation. Allegedly, he had been doing a lot of touching and squeezing and rubbing in private places on his patient's naked body. It was alleged that these assaults on military service members took place while patients were seeking pain management care. They say the doctor disguised his assault on victims under the pretense that it was part of a medical treatment plan but it was not. And it was not just junior impression of the soldiers. Some of the victims were senior leaders as well. 
And the Army soon realized that the investigation would be much larger than expected. It was not going to end anytime soon. And you know, that is usually the case when you have multiple cases of assault. Some victims are just slow to come forward for a number of reasons. But as the investigations widened, they were, they were definitely unprepared for what they found. This was laying the foundation for what they would describe as the largest sex scandal in service history. And as I already mentioned, it started off with 23 charges, and shortly thereafter, within a matter of months, it had grown to 53 charges, 53 charges involving at least 42 victims, and the majority, if all, if not all of the victims, were men. And one news report stated they were advised by an Army spokesperson that the charges involved multiple instances of abusive sexual contact and indecent viewing. It was also stated that Stockton attempted to cover the sexual abuse of victims by falsely representing that it was for a medical purpose. And they were not just young, impressionable soldiers. The victims included some in leadership positions. I saw a sergeant first class and I saw a, a sergeant major. And that's just shocking. And keep in mind, providing kids not just based on one individual's personal philosophy, that's not what's done. It's based on established standards of care. So how he was able to get along, get away with what he did for as long as he did is simply mind boggling. And while the shock and the embarrassment was riveting through the military circle, some of the victims had gotten lawyers and was began suing the army. Yep, civil suits were being filed against the army by some of the accusers. According to the filing, some of the patients claimed that they were still being seen by Dr. Stockin after the first claims of sexual abuse were levied against him in February of 2022. One of the accusers told the media that the army's negligence and his failure to act responsibly uh, after being, you know, notified resulted in that individual being sexually assaulted by Stockton. And one particular law firm in the local newspaper uh, had published an invitation for victims and witnesses to come forward. And this is the marketing from a law firm representing some of the victims. Let me say this is not an endorsement of this organization or any organization for that matter. I'm just sharing info I found as, as, I, as I was researching my story. And it's just to make my point. But it definitely does not mean that I am for or against any of the contributors I came across while preparing this video. But in addition to the problems and the charges he was facing related to his job, Dr. Stock, Dr. Stockin was also having a problem at home. It was reported that the doctor's wife had made some very serious allegations against him in their divorce petition. It was stated she sought a protective order against him in December of 2022 and accused him of verbal abuse, harassment, and unwanted sexual conduct. And I saw where the wife had been contacted about the military sex scandal involving her husband. She said that after she filed for her divorce, she became aware of the military allegations, but she declined to comment any further. And, you know, I'm sure there had been a lot going on behind the scene after charges were filed against him. And keep in mind that Dr. Stockton was never arrested. He was charged, but he was free to move around as he wished. But I'm sure investigators were secretly watching him. And I have to say allegedly because I don't know that to be true. But anyway, on February the 23rd, which is about two weeks ago, Dr. Stockton had his arraignment in a military courtroom at Joint Base Lewis McCord. Now, the arraignment is when the accuser is able to hear the charges brought against him, and he enters a plea. Now, within the charges of 47 specifications for abusive sexual conduct and five for indecent viewing. That's the final count because I read somewhere where one victim had to be removed. So the final count, 47 charges for sexual abuse and five counts for or five charges for indecent reviewing. Now, one report from someone who was present in the courtroom states that Dr. Stockin, flanked by his team of attorneys, entered the courtroom and he answered yes, Your Honor, to a series of questions from the military judge. They say he waived his right to a preliminary hearing 
and the right to have the charges read in court. So he elected not to have the laundry list of charges read out loud so everybody can hear them. And through his attorneys, he elected to defer a plea on the charges until a later date. And one of the lawyers indicated that when he does enter a plea, the plea will be not guilty. Now, from the public information, I was able to gain an appreciation for the process, beginning with the arraignment and continuing to the trial. Now, Dr. Stockton had some choices. He had the right to have his case decided by a panel of eight military officers who would comprise a jury, or he could have a verdict that is rendered by a judge. He selected a jury, which would be made up of eight officers who were senior in rank to him. One report indicated that a pool of almost 200 officers would be randomly selected for participation in this process. Now, when Dr. Stocking actually goes on trial, he'll be the first soldier prosecuted under a new law that removes commanders from having the authority to decide which cases go forward and which ones don't. New legislation signed by the president a few weeks ago covers 13 offenses, including murder, manslaughter, domestic violence, sexual abuse, child pornography, among others. And there's an ugly history behind that. You see, commanders often influence the outcome of a lot of cases, and that good old Boy Network resulted in many victims not getting the justice they deserve. And that was a problem with all branches of the armed forces. It's an ugly scar that left victims feeling re-victimized by our system of justice for decades. So finally, Congress listened and implemented a system of change that was signed into law by, by the president. This created an office of the Special Trial Counsel, a special prosecutor will now handle these cases. So it, it was designed to take away the influence of those commanders. But you know, when something has been embedded in the culture for so long, it's still left to be seen how much of that influence will really be removed. We'll just have to wait and see how it works out. And looking ahead, this is what I was able to determine about the upcoming trial and the proposed sequence of events. Of course, these are simply projections. Everything is subject to change. First, we know that a plea is still pending. Uh, Dr. Stockton did not enter a plea at his arraignment. Per his attorney, he would it would be done at his next court appearance, but we're not really sure when that is going to be. Then you have the pre-trial motions. There are three set of dates that are provided, April 17th to the 18th, July 9th to the 11th, and August 15th to 16th, and then the trial is tentatively scheduled for October the 7th. And keep in mind that the investigation into the crimes that the stocking is accused of com com committing, the investigation has continued and the Army has widened the investigation to include other assignments or Dr. Stockton's previous assignments. So currently there are 53 charges, but there's always the possibility that additional charges can be added at a later date. And I should mention that if he's found guilty of those 53 charges, he's facing over 300 years in prison, so essentially a lifetime behind bars. And as expected, his attorneys are acknowledging the magnitude and the high profile nature of this case, but still encouraging the public to reserve judgment because like anyone else facing trial, there's still that presumption of innocence. And they believe that the case should be tried in the courtroom and not in the media. And again, keep in mind that a plea has not been entered. And the attorneys are reinforcing that when a plea is entered, their client plans to plead not guilty to all of the charges. But I'll try to stay on top of this case and bring you updates whenever they become available. And that's all I have for you right now. Feel free to leave me a comment below and let me know what you think about this video. And by all means, feel free to like it and to share it. And if you haven't done so already, I want to invite you to subscribe to my channel by clicking on that right subscribe button. It's on the bottom right hand corner of your screen. And if you click on the bell that looks just like this one, that's a notification bell. If you click on that notification bell, you'll be the first to know whenever a new video is uploaded. I thank you for watching and I'll talk to you soon. Bye.